Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neesh Kumar Singh and we are talking about Loadana tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we are getting into the third component of the Load Runner, which is called as analysis. And analysis are just not limited to repro reproducing the graphs and reports, but of course has great options well within uh, to determine a better reporting and better graphing systems. And of course you have much more features in the analysis of the load runner much embedded with great options and helps you to make your reporting part more comfortable to diagnose the performance issues we have definitely a lot of graphs to be enabled as well as made use of and we can play around with these graphs and reports which basically helps a performance test engineer to showcase the problems to the server team and the development team as well not only that, even the architecture team gets into involved uh, to improvise the performance of the product. So that's where analysis plays a vital role in low data. And today we are getting started with navigation and understanding of the reports and graphs which can be populated as a part of your analysis of the load runner. So let's quickly get started and understand the same. Part of this tutorial of our load runner session, we are continuing ahead and moving into the third category or third component of the load runner, which is called as analysis. Here we will be understanding a quick introduction to what is analysis, understanding how to navigate inside analysis, and how to view graphs and reports in analysis. To begin working with analysis, I would like to take a formal way of understanding the same by creating a scenario and running it for a certain while and then looking at some of the populated analysis reports and graphs. I'm just running a simple scenario of two minutes with 10 simultaneous users working on starting or action part and then stopping all the user at five every 30 seconds. So without taking much of your time, let me just go ahead and start the scenario. The pop-up what you see every time here is basically the existing LRR file already exists from my previous runs. So it will ask me, do you want to overwrite? Well, it will delete the previous data. So as far as you have saved it, you can just excuse that. So click on yes and get started with the test. So right now, I have to wait for two to three minutes to basically go ahead and, uh, you know, complete the scenario. Once the scenario completes, we will look at the next one. So it seems like there was one failure simultaneously. So one of the user could not sign in. And what could be the issue? You can click on this to see that, that what exactly went wrong with this guy. So there was a HTTPS code 500. This person could not go ahead with this uh, access. So that's a really good thing to observe in our scenario that what exactly happened. So there was an init error on the status code was 500. That is internal server error. And the server could not allow him to log in. So right now, if you see, there are nine users who are working concurrently and uh, they are busy doing their task. So once they complete, our agenda today is to look into the analysis. So we'll go to the analysis option. So also simultaneously, you can see a lot of other graphs being populated. And of course, not all the graphs can be shown, but they are still getting populated. So we will see that in analysis that how to generate them. But the black ones are not getting populated at all, uh, even offline. So you cannot just, uh, you know, bring them to the graphical representation after the execution. So here uh, we are still waiting for some two minutes of time, which is like half the way right now. And uh, once this closes, you can actually move to results and click on analyze result, which is disabled right now. Because when the scenario is running, you cannot analyze the result. Only after the completion, you can analyze that. Also, you find a lot of help details on documentation of the controller here. So you don't really have to worry about finding some Google information to that. You can just come here and click on load runner controller help and you'll find amazing documentation for your understanding purpose. All right, so the users have started signing out and they are gradually exiting that means they are logging out and we are waiting for other four users to do the same job and stop there so you can see the details here and the moment these people also complete they will also log out and then we can go to the analysis
all right so i think they are done right now and they are moving to the user end and execute it completely now you can see that your session or scenario execution is complete now the next thing is go to results and click on analyze results so analyze result will basically open directly your analysis and also import the information from the controller to the analysis to populate these graphs in a much more interactive way and presentable way so when you open this first time like analysis initially it will be importing the result.lrr file from the load generator and populating in form of graphical representation once this is populated you can actually see some of the by default graphs already populated but other graphs can definitely be added and included so first of all you get something called as the name of the analysis file which contains this information and the extension of this file is called as .lra which stands for load runner analysis okay load runner analysis so extension of my analysis file is .lra then you get a summary report which you can see right now on the screen which includes the detail of the scenario executed for what duration and some of the information as the common uh, parameters like uh, total throughput was this average throughput was this total hits and total errors and so on plus you see the details of each transaction each action and there is something called as this logo here it says show SLA result I click on this it says SLA rules were not defined just because we have not included the SLAs right now there is no comparison between the expected and actual it's just giving me the actual so when you include these are the legends the green says pass, cross says fail, and a kind of blocker symbol says no data. So right now it means that there are no data defined initially, so I cannot say if whether it passed or failed. Plus you will see the response codes if there were any. So yes, for one user it was 500, and for all other users it was 200. So these are some of the basic navigation. On the left panel below this, you find all the ready-made graphs, which are also a tab on the top. So either you can jump from the tabs to tab, or you can also jump from here to see the different graphs. Okay. Plus, as you saw that there were a lot of graphs during the controller, which were in blue and it was generated, but not shown here. So all you need to do is right click on this, add a new item, add a new graph. And you would see the same thing what you were seeing there. So all the ones which are listed here were populated without your information during the execution of the scenario. So all the graphs which you see right now here were already configured or pre-configured and they were populated. You just have to select them. For example, transaction response time, uh, time under load. So just select this, open the graph and it will just show you what exactly the graph is all about. What was the information? Similarly, if I want HTTP status code summary, so right now I don't see that here, right? I just have to select it and press open graph. So I see that there was just one as 500 and rest all as 200 and the count as well. So similarly, just click on add and you can add a new graph. Plus, you can also add a new report here. For example, if you're looking at any particular report, you can find it and just include the name, surname, job title and all and include the information here and just click on generate. It will populate a documentation which will consist of all the relevant information configured by you. On the bottom here, you will find some of the special options to further filter out the content. For example, filters. You can use some of the filters here that is like web server source type the criteria that is equals to not equals to like not like or for any other else for example i go with the uh, running views and i want to see filter here can you see that the views status could be a filter condition for me then i have something called as granularity and all which we will see in the next tutorial so if you want to further customize your graph and see some particular part of it an area of it to understand and occupy the details about you can actually make use of this property section to further drill down and understand that what exactly the graph was all about sometimes the graphs are so complicated when you run it for longer duration you may have to highlight some of the critical areas which you want to observe so you can make use of these all options here and they will be different depending on different graphs okay filter none granularity five seconds throughput transition time so you can see that there's a difference okay so here we don't get granularity so a lot of things which we'll be covering in the next tutorial so don't worry about that 
The next section is on the right, which you see some hidden panes here. We have user notes. You can write some notes about any particular graph quickly to make an observation note. Then you have the raw data, which is basically the detailed data of the graph, like the data tables. So just click on this and tell them the time from where to where you want to monitor that and press OK. And now if you come to the raw data, you would find the information about this graph in a ta tabular form. Similarly, if I go to hits per second and I click on raw data, it's just not generated. Click on this to generate it and define the timeline, like the entire timeline. Press OK. And when I come to raw data, I can find out all the details. Right? You do have a filter option on the top and you can do that as well. The third one is graph data, which is completely about the graph information, which you are seeing with the nodes here. The nodes are being populated in the tabular form. So you do get a lot of other information on the right. So don't ignore these tabs, which is raw data, graph data, and user notes. So you can make use of them as well during your analysis details. Plus, by default, you do get a data table at the bottom as well which will be definitely to highlight about any particular graph. You can see pass and fail as the color legends. And of course, you can find the information in the graph. OK, so these are some of the quick information things which you need to know from the point of uh, analyzing and quick navigation. Plus, you can save this file for future references. You can also print the graphs or print the reports which you have. You can apply an overall filter here. And you can definitely make use of it. Plus, you do have some options like draw an arrow if you want to highlight something which is like this, or the relationship is going to be here. So you can just define some kind of quick relationships that, okay, at this point, this is what happened, and so on. And then, uh, you know, you, you do have like, you know, the set graph display options. So you can define whether you want bars, you want columns, or anything else. So you just have to select a graph and make use of these options. Plus, we do have provisions to correlate a graph and merge a graph. So if you right click on this, the remaining options fall here. For example, set filter or group by, drill down, granularity, uh, measurement trends, cursors, raw data, merge graph, correlate graphs. So you can merge two different graphs to see them together. That all we will see in the upcoming tutorials. So right now, just wanted to give you a quick basic overview of what exactly analysis is and what kind of options do you find in analysis in order to view the details of your executor scenario. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.